It does actually look pretty cute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech and this is Music Pi, a case and modded Raspberry Pi 3A Plus I've made to stream music to Amazon Echo devices, since Amazon Echo uh, third generation dot is so much better. If you want to uh, read more, there is a link to the review of Amazon uh, Echo Dot and uh, also there is a link to how to set up Plex uh, to stream the music from device like this to your Amazon Echo devices for free. Now in this video we're going to talk in details on how this has been done and uh, what are the problems I was uh, facing uh, while designing the case and making it all happen. So. Uh, Let's take a look, shall we? Alexa, ask Plex to suggest something. How about something in the genre of pop rock? Would you like to listen to Greatest Hits by Billy Idol? Yes. Playing the album Greatest Hits by Billy Idol. When thinking about design like this, I had in mind Raspberry Pi Zero. I knew Raspberry Pi Zero wasn't strong enough to stream the files, etc. However, due to size, I was thinking maybe Raspberry Pi Zero W would be able to stream the music off Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, Plex no longer supports Raspberry Pi's Zero series, so that quickly became a dead end. The next port available was either Ras full-size Raspberry Pi 3 or 2, uh, or Ras the latest model Raspberry Pi 3A+, Plus, which I ended up using. And I've ended up using it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was much smaller and it had a Wi-Fi interface, which was for me important. The second of all, it was easier for me to actually hide the USB inside. If you take a look at the regular board and if you want a USB stick, you're going to end up with something that is this size and it's quite hard to cater for in, f in terms of um, the enclosure. So while well, I was thinking Raspberry Pi 3A Plus, uh, it's cheaper and it's sufficient for this purpose. Plex works with it greatly. Now it wasn't without some problems and a couple of problems I've encountered uh, happened straight away as I was designing the case. As you can see I've got a first design in my hands and the design even though it's cut properly and it looks really nice, there's a massive problem with this. It's much smaller than original board. And why is it smaller? Because I didn't have my board in ha at hand to check the sizes and I've trusted one of the write-ups online with the dimensions. Unfortunately, the dimensions were wrong and I've ended up with a much smaller enclosure than I'm supposed to have. So always check what you're designing against. Uh, verify that uh, uh, the design sizes are correct and if you're going to make a mistake make your own mistake don't repeat someone else's mistakes people do make them online and unfortunately something i've learned really quickly with this now another mistake was on my part uh, when i initially made my first print uh, i didn't leave myself enough space on top of the board uh, on top of the lid uh, to fit all the electronics. It was literally about two millimeters lacking in terms of uh, how much height I needed to hide everything inside underneath the lid. Uh, now fortunately Fusion 360 is a brilliant software. Uh, there is a three-year uh, free license you can use. Um, and fixing a mistake like that was quite simple. I also had to realign the output, uh, the I.O. in here too. So fixing a problem like this in the traditional software would uh, consist of editing entire sketch uh, or entire design in playing with the 3D model. Uh, how it works with the Fusion, I just entered new dimensions where I specify the dimensions of the um, pieces and the entire model has been recalculated had been recalculated in seconds and I was able to print it out. Unfortunately, due to my mistake, I had to wait two hours first to print this one out just to find out that the cover wasn't um, constructed well enough. I had a problem with holes 
my printer was not able to print out a holes as neatly as designed on the uh, in the file. For, um, fortunately, there wasn't a big of a problem because I simply used a drill to drill through uh, the holes again to make them bigger and make them fit uh, my the screws I and bolts I've got uh, prepared for this project. That also meant that I had to enlarge the bore, uh, the holes in the Raspberry Pi board itself. Initially, I've planned the lid to uh, consist just a single element, uh, just a single piece of acrylic, and I wanted just to engrave it and paint it to make it look like a metal. Quickly, however, I realized that some of that stuff is not going to work as well, and I have came up with the idea of adding additional layer. The additional layer is a clear perspex plastic, so it will uh, put the light through, the design and you'll be able to actually uh, well use a highlight to highlight specific elements now the first idea was to use RGB LEDs and the LEDs uh, would be great for this the RGB ones uh, because I could you know um, define different colors if I wanted however due to light pollution and because the LEDs are quite close that wasn't really the greatest solution so what I came up with were color plastic foils like this and these foils basically go underneath the uh, lid the first part of the lid and uh, they rest on the plastic glass in here that way I use black white LEDs to uh, change the color well I use the white LEDs in conjunction with the plastic foil to change the color of the different parts of the design and at the same time I've created a really neat white lid around uh, the box which separates the design and makes it more interesting. Removing USB uh, was a really difficult process, mostly because I wanted to spare the USB uh, for later use. Now, initially, I just planned to flip the USB underneath it because it would be just easier to keep the alignment. However, because the mounting pin pins weren't in line with uh, the USB pins, I quickly dropped this idea and had to come up with an alternative solution. And the alternative solution was to place the USB on top of the Raspberry Pi, facing inwards. That way I saved myself about 5mm of thickness and I was able to actually pick a stick that would suit this purpose perfectly. Now this stick has a very low profile and the sticks you can use uh, are up to 512 gigabytes of memory so you're always gonna have enough storage for your uh, local files. Uh, you could in theory use SD card for this however because SD cards are being used uh, by the system etc I've decided to go for the mounted storage instead. The lights on my music pies are driven by four white LEDs. Those are very simple LEDs connected through 220 ohm resistors to pins. I've decided to connect them to separate different pins so if you want to be creative you can actually drive each individual LED and create some lighting effects. That's up to you. I just turn them on on boot and turn them off when the device is off. Now these are connected uh, through a piece of prototyping PCB I found and as it happened it was just the perfect piece of board to kind of create a makeshift a raspberry hat. That way uh, I could uh, slot in the hat on top of the pins and remove it at any given time. That's great because if I want to change something with this designer there is no soldering required. The software itself um, basically consists of two different elements. First I have cront up that make sure that my USB stick is always mounted so each time the device reboots I've got a sequence in the cron top that mounts the USB as a music drive and that way Plex has access to the files itself. Second script is the script that turns on four different, uh, LED, uh, four different LEDs and they are 03, 04, 19 and 26 GPIOs. Now the script itself only sets those pins highs high so uh, that's pretty much it there is no light effect whatsoever associated right now with this design and again I made the script executable and uh, 
uh, set a clone tab to basically run this script on the reboot. Now the entire experience has been slightly frustrated at times due to mistakes I've made, but in all fairness this is my second Fusion design, so I'm really really pleased how close it resembles the original design, so I'm really happy about that. Uh, as per cost of the case, because of the size, the cost is very small. The pieces of acrylic I've used, there were scrap pieces of acrylic I found in the T-Sec space in Ben. And as per the 3D design, I doubt I've used more than two or three pounds of plastic worth of filament uh, to actually make the case. Now Raspberry Pi costs £22 in UK and it's very similar price outside of the UK and then you can grab a stick depending on how much storage you need anything between 8 gigs to 512 gigs is possible I've linked a couple of sticks in the descriptions that won't break the bank and will keep the cost of this device for uh, under $35 now for that price you can actually build your own device and stream music to Amazon Echo devices for free now you could in theory uh, put some films on it but, but because I'm using only Wi-Fi interface uh, I cannot warrant the film's gonna work great however for music this is perfect if you're interested in building your Raspberry Pi so which is a proper NAS drive uh, I've built one before and I have this project also described uh, on my website and I'll link this in a description for you so if you're interested in making a, a drive that is capable of uh, uh, streaming your films, holding your data, uh, provides you with arrays of drives, that's another project I've made and it's fair to say there's a couple of more things that probably could have been done to this case uh, to make it even better. Um, one of them would be RGB LEDs to enable pulsing lights etc and use internal PWM signal from one of the pins that way I could use uh, individually addressable strip uh, to actually control all four different lighting points uh, another design would have been uh, probably uh, I don't know uh, making USB uh, built-in and having an additional slot in here which would be probably possible and uh, but as it stands, I'm quite happy with the design itself and I'll be continuing to use this device to stream my music. So if you're interested in more tutorials like this and more videos uh, about Raspberry Pi and home automation, just uh, follow me on social media and uh, subscribe to the channel uh, to get all notifications whenever something's up. I don't have a regular upload up, unfortunately. So do that and if you want to read about it and uh, um, see more pictures about the uh, entire process obviously just uh, in the video description you'll find also a link uh, to a full write-up about the music pie. For now, thank you so much guys for watching and as usual I'm gonna see you in next video. Take care!